Welcome to Commsverse. This is session 353, A Vision for Intelligent Communications. Our speaker today is Nuno Arias Silva. Nuno, go ahead and uh, start your presentation. Okay. Hi. Welcome to my session about Microsoft Teams, <clears throat> a vision for intelligence communications. Just a resume about me. Uh, I passed my last 20 years working in IT in projects, mainly in infrastructures and security within Microsoft products. And the last years, <clears throat> the projects more focus on Office 365. <clears throat> my big phrase is about I advise my clients to be proactive in adopting new Microsoft technologies that help them to reach business needs and to accomplish their goals. It's my main mission to the customers. Uh, here you have my contacts, you have here my blog, my email, my Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. I work at GFI uh, as an architect manager um, and working on Office 365 projects. And here is the agenda for today. We will have an overview and we have, we'll have Microsoft Teams, then intelligence communications, then a little demo. To understand more about the foundation of all uh, communications within Microsoft, the part of foundations in Microsoft in the last years, it was about Skype for Business. It was a news experience about the, the billions of minutes of voice and so on. Uh, the gross commercial uh, available in every countries and about more than 100 million active users. Uh, Indu was a leader. Then it was a change. It appears uh, Microsoft Teams because we need to do a change to a modern workplace. As you can see, the numbers just to introduce uh, at the time that I that I made this slide. 45% uh, use social tools at work, <coughs> uh, many devices per user, and so on. <coughs> but if you are facing now within this uh, pandemic uh, era, uh, we need tools uh, to work remotely and to collaborate. And if we can do a study now, the numbers will be Iger because uh, many people, many companies and organization has adopted new technologies to work together. And the teams came to have a central place to collaboration. And what do we have inside of teams? In teams, it's a hub for teamwork within Office 365. We can use it for communicate, to chat, to meetings, to calling, uh, directly one to orders and so on. We can also collaborate within files and have chat with that files. And also we can customize it. We can add many applications on the store to connect to different services and work with confidence. Uh, in the main area about uh, the admin, the admin have the dashboards about the quality and the configurations of all terms. And what is the vision about intelligence communications? Microsoft Teams is the client uh, to use 
to the communications to the end users. Uh, if we can go back, uh, the new backend infrastructure, it was based part of it about experience of Skype. And we also have artificial intelligence about transfer calls and meetings and so on. What Teams is and what is the objectives? It's a new uh, infrastructure built for uh, companies with voice, with video, with meetings. We have more efficient bandwidth consumption, more robust telemetry, maintenance with minimal disruption. For example, now, if you are using now Teams, you doesn't uh, know if the customer, if the, the client of the Teams is updated because it's automatically updated uh, and faster mean join times for users and better browse experience. You can also, for example, um, go uh, to a Teams meeting without install the application. That's a, an example. And what about intelligence communications? Intelligence communications is about have cognitive services, machine learning, and also Microsoft Graph. For example, within these, we can connect uh, about other services uh, like Microsoft Graph, machine learning, cognitive services, and connect some other bots to the teams, and not just another application uh, just to chat or to do meetings. And how was all the, the area? Before we have insights, history, and deeper content, during everyone is connected to the meeting and after you have notes and action items uh, that you can continue the work because if you if you compare teams to other platforms uh, other online platforms you don't have these in the same tool within teams you can have all the parts and create your meeting and prepare your meeting and after the meeting you can continue the conversation and so on that's the better part because it's all in a central place you can also communicate through meetings you can join with uh, video voip dialing conference options from mobile desktop browser and some devices certified by microsoft you can have room systems, uh, the Teams room systems. You can you can search on the web uh, Teams certified devices, and you have you have there many brands that have Team devices certified just to Teams. And the intelligence meetings, uh, you can have recommendations based on availability, related files, just history and cloud recordings of meeting with transcription, translation, indexed for searching, and so on. For example, um, a Teams meeting, when it's recorded, it goes to the stream platform, the platform of video within Office 365. And you have there, then you can share to other people um, that uh, recording. It's a, a very good tool. For example, uh, we do projects about change management and for example, about change management, about things uh, to, to the end users. And we also pre uh, have the recording available on the portal to users that, for example, couldn't make it to that to that slot um, to see the presentation. 
that's very good because to the end users have a unique portal that can see the videos through Office 365 and put it on an increment, for example. We can communicate through calling. You can connect through your phone system. You have calling plans. You have a dedicated phone number for domestic or international calls from Microsoft. You can call uh, to everywhere. And you have the possibility for connect, for example, to your local PTSN connectivity. Then you have, for example, a session border controller that connects your voice from your provider directly to Teams. Then you have your own numbers directly on Teams. And within one platform, you have the public number uh, within the same application that you connect and collaborate your normal communications. And what about the future unified portfolio on the cloud and on-premise? Just to understand more, uh, the on-premises Skype for Business continue. Uh, some customers need to have hybrid, for example, with Teams because some legacy uh, applications they have, or for example, a call center or so on. And you have the Office 365. The Office 365, you have all the experience about the Teams and Microsoft will continue to support Skype for Business server uh, and about Skype for Business online uh, will end uh, the support next year. You can migrate now uh, because it's a very good transition to the organization. But how do we transition to Teams if you are using, for example, Skype for Business Online? Okay, to transition to Teams, we need to understand to enable uh, with transformation and communication. We need to communicate with, with your end users about what will happen. Because all of that is very important to the end users. Uh, about all the persons that are going uh, to communicate and to transition to a new service, it's very important because the, the problem is if you don't uh, communicate to the end users, the end users doesn't know how we'll change it. Then we need to upgrade the things about your needs. You can empower your controls and transition and support to partner and device ecosystem. You need to understand what are the connections, what are the devices, and understand the end users how to change it. And about Skype for business and teams in, in interoperability. Uh, the interoperability is critical because you can stop the communications. Uh, you need to plan how to migrate it. Uh, you need to understand your users uh, if they are using just call or chat and how to connect to each other. We also have the advanced control options to transfer or call forwarding. You need to ensure workflows continue within the organization, within calls, text, and presence. And what you need to know today? We, to go to Teams, we need to have several phases. First of all, you need to plan your journey to Teams. You can see the roadmap about the Teams to understand what is the news and so on. And if you are uh, ready to stage, but 
start your plan today. You onboard users, begin using Teams today. The benefits uh, of app for teamwork within Microsoft 365. And for example, for the companies that not using Teams, you also need to plan your journey. You need to onboard users, how the, the teams work, how to do a change management project to better understand uh, the organization, the areas, um, the verticals, the teams, how they work to give the better tool and to explain them giving examples how to work with teams in their scenario. If it's a migration about Skype, you can uh, run side by side <clears throat> and then pilot resources. It's a, a very important step to understand the migration processes and drive value through, through user adoption. The user adoption, it's important from the beginning. You need to include it on the plan. Uh, not just when migrating from Skype to Teams, but always adopting new technologies. And it's a cycle because, for example, within a within a year, for example, Microsoft Teams may be a little different with new features and so on, and all months are coming new features. And we need to regular base to give some presentations to end users to update, for example, a flyers, uh, guides, uh, videos, how to, to the end users uh, need uh, to be updated and need to know the new features. And what should you do today? About plans, onboard users, again, and we need to explore the parts side by side till needs and drive adoption. Remember this, it's very important. And let's see the roadmap, some party, some parts here are coming or already available. For example, what is available today and what are the next steps? You can have unified presence, import contacts and so on. Uh, you have many uh, features that are coming to Microsoft Teams. For example, the last uh, announcement that you will have 49 people um, in screens uh, you can see video about 49 people and all teams are completely transforming at the way and Microsoft listen. You can go to, for example, to the user voice uh, site and give them uh, some suggestions to implement it. And if you are seeing, for example, a feature that you want um, and it's not available, you can go there, search if someone has um, asked to Microsoft implement it, and you can vote it. More votes you give them, more faster the feature comes out. And for example, another features, for example, cloud recording, broadcast meetings, for example, the last meet, meeting support, uh, about uh, 250 people. During COVID, Microsoft extends just a little, the large meeting. Uh, you have also collaborate meetings and so on. Many features uh, are coming, some of parts are available. And what about the interruption? You have uh, interruption also with Skype and so on. 
many features are available. Cock use, for example, um, this thing give ring forward to a group, out of office support, support automatically available, uh, calling park, groups, and so on. And you can have many devices already certified directly to Teams. And how do you transform your organization? For example, for customers new to Teams, you have here a site, successwithteams.com. You have here practical guidance, the plan, the deliver, an operate framework. You have here checklists, priority sites, adoption guides, and tools. That's available to you. To existing customers that have Skype uh, and Teams, you have the Skype and Teams uh, site dedicated what are the best practices, the tool and resources that we are talking about. And you have also fast track uh, to support all customers. And if uh, you are uh, confident with a partner, uh, it's best to choose a, past, a partner to help to all this new journey because the partner has more experience in the field directly with these kind of scenarios within very uh, types of organization from small to big ones and give the best insights and have for example uh, an adoption uh, framework or adoption area that you can use to really adopt a new technology like this. About external access to meetings. External users have access to meetings. Teams guest access can be guaranteed by admin. For example, you can uh, have anonymous join and lobby functionality for anonymous users to join meeting and you also have federations that features that are really good to the, the organizations. About global availability for meetings, voice and chat. Uh, this, this, um, this screen shows what is available about meetings, telephony, data resilience. Uh, some parts are available to many countries, like for example, part of telephony and so on, some countries, for example, where I reside in Portugal, that doesn't have uh, the PTSN calling available here in Portugal. Then we connect the, the customers using um, session border controllers directly to the PTSN um, telco uh, provider. Then you have a resume about the availability of uh, the telephony and data resilience about Teams. And to understand more about how can we communicate within Teams. For example, you can communicate without effort to give everyone to know. You have credit conversions. You have also private chats, group conversations. You can share information in an open and transparent way. You can communicate across organizations and geographies. You can humanize the workplace with GIFs, stickers and emojis and so on. That's a good point of start to the end users to know about the big features about Teams. You can quickly access the apps you love. For example, you can connect to third party applications when need other Office uh, 365 applications. You have a space 
directly to share to co-author office documents within the app without leaving the app for example word excel sharepoint OneNote, and so on and you can have also conversations about the file that you are editing you also have ml integration for example you can send an email directly to a channel. Um, for example, in an organization that the official communication is email, but you are transitioning to teams, to persons have conversation and a historical. The best way that we advise the customer is, OK, you can say send the direct communications by email to each person, but you send the same email to the channel of a team. Why is this important? Because, for example, if a person uh, coming to the company next week or next month, uh, if the previous communication was just by email, the person doesn't know that information and if they that person doesn't know they can can't ask that information because that doesn't know that exists and if you send the mail to a channel <clears throat> when the people join to the company and when when the the that person join to that uh, team they will have the historical uh, of the emails uh, within that team. And it's very important to continue uh, and have the historical to new persons. Also, you can tailor your workspace to include apps and services or by Microsoft or by third parties, or you can create your own. For example, you can connect to several services that are um, from uh, within Office 365, like Planner, Power BI, Yammer. Uh, the base of the teams is a SharePoint. The SharePoint uh, is the base of uh, the teams, based on groups, groups of security, for example, when you create a team in Teams, it creates a SharePoint site within Office 365 groups. That's very important to know that part because all these services are all connected. And about admins, you have security, you have compliance and manageability within Office 365. You have the certifications. The Teams is on the top of the certified products. You have all the certifications about uh, the compliance. You have protection with e-discovery and audit. You have multi-factor authentication to connect, for example, guest access. And you have to manage aspects in a single admin experience. That's important to admins to can configure and to know about these kind of configurations. And what about meetings lifecycle? To understand what is lifecycle that we are doing during the meetings. For example, doing a pre-meeting we have conversations you need to prepare to discuss content, for example, a presentation and so on. You need to schedule from Teams or from Outlook. During the meeting, you are joining the meeting from any device. You have the video and content. You can share desktop, apps and content. For example, you are seeing here, it's a Teams broadcast um, that's a feature that is in teams that can broadcast to worldwide uh, now the maximum 
people can see this broadcast simultaneous 10,000 users. Um, during COVID, Microsoft has expanded to a little more, but it's a feature about uh, Teams. For example, you can uh, share the desktop or share, for example, if you are using uh, a phone, you can share your screen phone also. Imagine that you can go to a meeting and you have your file, your presentation just in your phone or uh, it's synchronized with OneDrive and so on and your computer broke. You can do the meeting as well because you can start the presentation within your phone and start the meeting. It's not a blocker anymore. Uh, you can follow and share uh, directly and also you can record and play back uh, after the meeting. A post meeting, you can continue the group chat. You can follow up action items, you can share notes, share recording as I told you before. In some customers, we put it, for example, in an intranet, if, if it's um, a meeting about learning something new and you can schedule a follow-up meeting with with contents that it's what happens in meetings in pre-meetings during and post meeting and just to understand more what is changing from this year uh, about teams on the left fewer apps richer experience you have all integrated you can you can have uh, interoperability within Skype. What is not changing from Microsoft? It continues to to commitment to Skype for Business Server, commitment to cloud voice and video, premium value in A5 and communication services, and support third party devices and solutions. And Skype for Business is not ended. If the customers need to upgrade their infrastructure because they need or regulations or so on, so on, we have available Skype for Business Server 2019 that you can connect within Teams and you can in the future migrate it or not. But it's um, based on that. About development, about development, you can customize your teams. You can create tabs, bots, extensions, connectors, activity feeds, actional messaging, Microsoft Graph, you can connect within those kind of services. For example, within Converse, you are seeing when you go, for example, to a, a channel and so on, you have a, a flow that puts information on the channels to, to you as a, an attendee. It's a very good uh, feature that is available in this conference and you are experienced this conference about using the experience of Teams. And finally, to understand more. Uh, if you are using Outlook and communications directly is to continue to Outlook because it's the tool that will never end. Uh, remember that you can also send the emails to a Teams channel. Uh, if you are doing communications in a inner loop, you can use Teams. If it's outer loop to connect across openly your organization, you can use Yammer. All these content sites and files, remember that is on SharePoint. And security and within the centralization using Office 365 groups, Area security manage 
about the teams. What about the next steps for companies that are not using? Turn on Microsoft Teams to your company. Identify a team to start the pilot and plan company rollout. Okay. For per person that doesn't see Teams uh, already, I just will show here a little demo. Okay. We have here a Teams that have se several Teams within here. We can have the the channels, for example, the general, uh, the sales reports, and so on, and just to understand what are the capabilities about Teams. When we are positioned, for example, in a channel, we have here all the all the, the conversations. We have here, for example, product launch event. It's a planner connected directly to Teams. For example, if you go here from mostly reports, you have files within this team. You have very uh, files about, for example, Excel, because it's uh, most re reports about sales and marketing. And you also can have a Power BI integrated within that team. And you don't need to go out the application to go to Power BI. And for example, if you go to Pro Lunch event, you have another planner within that team. If you go, for example, to other uh, team, you can have, for example, a kickoff. For example, this is a, a web page internally that is connected directly here on Teams. You also have, for example, some retail accounts. This is a list. You can open within the SharePoint directly or, or with Power Apps. You can create an app or we, we can edit this list. Another report that is a Word document directly here on tabs. The document library, for example, I have put it here, the document library that show all these general sales and files that are not in Teams because this is all are in SharePoint. For example, the best part that you can have here, you can add uh, another app. You can connect to third party apps. For example, you have a very good app built in within Microsoft that calls who. For example, I connect here who and I can start, for example, who is Bianca. And it's a bot. And it tells me, okay, you need to perform searches. I will give you allow. OK. It's a salesperson. OK. I can ask who is the manager. OK. It shows who is the manager. We can show the organization chart. And it's faster uh, to connect within just a tool. And we can just ask here. You, we can search here, but if you use the who bot, it's faster. You can also have many questions that you can do. Who knows about, for example, who knows about project? And it shows 
10% about nodes, about project. And for example, I go here, for example, Adele, and we have here the contact number, we can check directly, email, and start uh, contacting that person. It's very good. And you also have more apps. It's a huge part of apps, not just Microsoft. And you can upload your customer app. You can uh, connect to several apps directly, or you can create your own uh, about your business. Okay. Just to understand how it's the part of the back of the teams. It's not just that. Let me show in the browser to understand the experience is the same. But for example, if I go here, for example, to this channel, you can see the site of SharePoint, you can open here. And if you go home, you can have your personal page within your team, like an intranet. It not, it's, it's not just teams. Then you can connect your activity. You have also some shortcuts to quick links, to retail accounts, global marketing, and so on. And all these is available within Teams. For example, if you want to put this page on the Teams, just select here and just go here to my Teams and I will put here, for example, add a tab. Add a tab as a website. I will call home page team and just paste URL here. You can post the channel about this tab. And as you can see, you have here your internal page of SharePoint within your team. And then you, for example, to understand, I just create this home page team, correct? Then I will shift to teams on desktop. I came to retail general. As you can see, it's here. It's automatically available to all team. OK. Questions? Uh, no questions in the chat window, Nuno, and uh, you do have two minutes. OK. OK. Uh, after this session, we'll have uh, another session to ask questions to me. Uh, it's the how it's called the post session. Yes, I just put the uh, I just put the information in the chat window. It's the post session okay. networking. I, I have seen. OK, and uh, thank you for assisting this session. You have here all my contacts, my blogs, emails and so on. And also many thanks to all the sponsors because Without sponsors, uh, this conference uh, was not possible. And go to the rooms, to the sponsors, and see the solutions they have to connect within Microsoft products. Okay? That's great, Nuno. Thank you very much, and thank, thank you, you for the attendance. Okay, thank you. Okay, we will be ending the session now.